Okay, so welcome to part two of this video on uh, resting membrane potential across cells and the uh, Goldman-Hodgkin-Katz constant field equation. Okay, so what we've discussed so far is that uh, you have these concentration gradients of sodium and potassium across the cell. And I just want to give you some numbers for uh, what these concentrations usually are. So usually the concentration of potassium in the extracellular compartment uh, is around 4 millimolars, basically. And the concentration of potassium... Oh, sorry, that's the intracellular compartment. The concentration of potassium in the extracellular compartment is 4 millimolars. The concentration of potassium in the intracellular component is generally around 155 millimolars. The concentration of sodium on the intracellular compartment is 12 millimolars. And the concentration of sodium generally in the extracellular compartment is around 145 millimolars. Okay, uh, so the concentration gradients are around the same, but actually if you look at this, uh, the concentration gradient for potassium is actually twice as big as the concentration gradient uh, for sodium. So that's another reason why uh, the net movement of potassium from the intracellular compartment to the extracellular component, compartment, i.e. Uh, this movement of potassium in the, from the intracellular to the extracellular subtract the movement of potassium back from the extracellular to the intracellular, why that is overall bigger than the net movement of sodium from the extracellular to the intracellular. Firstly, it's because um, the permeability of potassium is bigger than the permeability of, of, to sodium of the cell membrane, uh, but it's also because the concentration gradient is actually that bit be bigger. Okay, uh, so uh, we discussed how what will happen is that you'll overall move positive charge from the intracellular compartment to the extracellular compartment uh, in the form of potassium ions because you will move more potassium this way, basically, than you will move sodium this way. So overall, you'll move positively char charge. And as that positive charge grows, the voltage, uh, the, the electrical potential difference uh, will uh, grow. This one, uh, the extracellular electrical potential will become bigger and bigger, and the electrical potential of the intracellular compartment will become more and more negative. And that will make it more and more difficult to move uh, potassium ions from this intracellular compartment to this extracellular compartment, along with it will make it more difficult to move sodium ions from the intracellular compartment to the extracellular compartment. So the movement of positive charge from the intracellular of the compartment to the extra of the compartment will go down and that will cause the net movement of potassium to, in this way to go down and the net movement of sodium the other way to go up and eventually what will happen is that the net movement of potassium will equal the net movement of sodium in the opposite direction and at that point the amount of positive charge that you're moving in one direction from the intercellular compartment to the extra of the compartment will equal the amount of positive charge you're moving from the extra of the compartment to the intercellular of the compartment and then you'll have an equilibrium you'll have an electrical uh, equilibrium. However, I want to stress that at electrical equilibrium, uh, you are still overall moving positive po potassium ions from the intracellular compartment to the extracellular compartment, and you're still moving sodium ions from the extracellular compartment to the intracellular compartment. Remember that if you have a certain concentration of sodium, uh, so let's say this is the extracellular compartment and this is the intracellular compartment, and you have uh, a higher concentration, I think it's 145 millimolars of sodium on this side and 12 millimolars of sodium on the intracellular component, then um, basically the Nernst equation will tell you what electrical potential difference you need uh, in order uh, that these that there will be no net movement of sodium. So that's what this Nernst potential does. It will, uh, The Nernst uh, equation will take in the concentrations of sodium on either side and tell you what electrical potential difference you would need across this membrane, uh, basically in order for you to have no net movement of sodium. So it's a different, it's telling you a different thing to what the goldman hodgkin katz const, uh, constant field equation tells you the Goldman equation or the Goldman Hodgkin Katz constant field equation tells you what voltage you need to have in order for there to be no net movement of charge whereas these are the, are the voltages that you would need to have in order to have no net movement of sodium ions and potassium ions uh, respectively. Okay uh, so uh, this uh, plus 67 millivolts means the potential difference from the extracellular compartment to the intracellular compartment. So when we talk about voltages across cell membranes, we always mean the electrical potential difference in the intracellular compartment subtract the electrical potential uh, in the extracellular compartment. Let me say that again because I said it wrong. It's the intracellular, it's the electrical potential difference. So if I draw a cell, when I say the voltage across a cell membrane, what I mean is the electrical potential 
inside the cell subtract the electrical potential outside the cell. So basically, it's the voltage going that way, basically. It's how much bigger the intracellular electrical potential is than the extracellular electrical potential. And obviously, because of this, uh, because you overall move potassium ions out of the cell, uh, then overall, actually, this one is more positive and this one's negative. So if you ask, what's this one subtract this one, you're going to get a negative value, which is where this negative 65 millivolts comes from. Okay, so the equation that tells you how to calculate uh, the electrical potential difference from uh, the extracellular, um, extracellular uh, com uh, fluid compartment to the intracellular compartment is the Goldman-Hodgkin-Katz constant field equation. And that equation is that this is equal to RT, so the universal gas constant, times the temperature in kelvins over the Faradayan constant times the natural logarithm of uh, the... Um, extracellular components, so uh, you put in the permeability of sodium, you have to put in uh, these constants here because they, th those are going to tell you, um, they're basically going to tell you the ratio between the permeability of sodium and the permeability of potassium and that now affects this, times the sodium concentration in the extracellular compartment plus the permeability to potassium times the um, concentration of potassium in the extracellular compartment divided by the permeability of to sodium times the concentration of sodium in the intracellular compartment plus the permeability to potassium times the concentration of potassium in the intracellular compartment. Now that looks a bit of a monstrosity, but it actually comes from the exact same principles as the Nernst equation, and we will derive it um, from using the same principles as we use to derive the Nernst equation. But basically, I hope that even if you're not going to follow the derivation, you understand what this does. What this does is it says, okay, if we have two fluid compartments and you have a, this is, let's say this is the intracellular compartment and this is the extracellular compartment, and you have a certain concentration of sodium in the intracellular compartment, which is about 12 millimolar generally, so this is generally around 12 millimolar, and you have a certain concentration of um, sodium in, uh, sorry, you have a certain concentration of potassium in the intracellular compartment which is generally around, was it 155? Yep, 155 millimolar. And you have a certain concentration of sodium in the extracellular component, which is around 145 millimolar. And a certain concentration of potassium in the extracellular compartment, which is generally around uh, 4 millimolar. Then all you need to know is, in fact, you don't actually need to know what the permeability to sodium and the permeability to potassium is. But what you need to know is the ratio between them. What you need to know is the permeability of to potassium over the permeability to sodium. So you need to know how much more permeable is the membrane to potassium than it is to sodium. So let's say the membrane is twice as permeable to potassium as it is to sodium. So if a sodium ion hits, uh, sorry, if a, a potassium ion hits this membrane, it's twice as likely to actually go through the membrane than if a sodium ion hits the membrane. And the reason you only need to know that ratio is because basically in this equation you can just divide the top by the permeability to sodium and you can divide the bottom by the permeability to sodium and that's a perfectly valid mathematical uh, thing to do. You're just multiplying uh, by 1 over the permeability to sodium and dividing by uh, 1 over the permeability to sodium and when you do that basically what will happen is if I just write out what happens then the voltage between if we um, if we just take this uh, Goldman-Hodgkin-Katz constant field equation and do that with it, then we multiply the top by 1 over the permeability to sodium, and we get that obviously it cancels here, so you get the sodium concentration in the extracellular compartment plus, and then you'll get the permeability to potassium divided by the permeability to sodium times the concentration of potassium in the extracellular compartment. So all I'm doing is dividing by the permeability to sodium on the top, and I'm also now going to have to divide by the permeability to sodium on the bottom. So when I do that, I get sodium concentration intracellular, so it's cancelling here, plus the permeability to potassium over the permeability to sodium times the concentration of potassium in the intracellular component. Okay, so that is why you only actually need to know how much more permeable the membrane is to potassium than sodium in order to plug it into those, that equation. So basically, what this says 
is if you know these concentrations, these starting concentrations, and you know how much more permeable the membrane is to potassium than it is to sodium, then you can plug it in here and it will tell you the uh, electrical potential difference from the extracellular component to the intracellular component. I .e. It will tell you how much more positive the intracellular component is than the extracellular component. But of course, we know that the intracellular component is actually going to be more negative than the extracellular component, so this sh should spit us out a negative number. And basically, uh, you just plug in the numbers to here and it will work it out for you. That is what the goldman hodgkin katz constant field equation does. It tells you what this electrical potential difference needs to be in order that uh, the movement, the net movement of charge is equal. Uh, the net movement of charge, rather, is zero, i.e. the movement of potassium out of the cell equals the movement of sodium into the cell, and therefore that your each of those ions, a potassium ion has a charge of plus one, a sodium ion has a charge of plus one, if the movement of sodium exactly equals the movement of potassium, then overall you get no net movement of charge. Now, it's slightly, slightly more complicated in reality than this equation suggests. That's what this equation calculates. It's nearly, nearly the resting membrane potential across cells. However, there is a complication, which is that this sodium-potassium pump, it would be idyllic if the sodium-potassium pump pumped two sodiums out and two potassiums in, I, then its role truly would be to just reverse the movement of sodium and the movement of potassium at resting potential. So remember, at resting potential, what's going to happen is that you're still going to have a net movement of sodium this way and a net movement of potassium that way. Uh, it's just that they exactly cancel each other out so that the uh, electrical potential difference is fixed at around minus 60 millivolts, okay? So you don't move any charge. So it would be idyllic if the role of the sodium-potassium pump was simply to reverse this, i.e. it moved potassium back this way and it moved sodium back this way so that everything's nice in the equilibrium. The problem is the sodium potassium pump doesn't do that. It moves three sodiums this way and two potassiums that way, i.e. it moves unequal amounts of charge. So it is slightly more complicated basically because the sodium potassium pump makes it slightly more complicated. So uh, basically the sodium potassium pump moves three sodiums this way and two potassiums that way. So you have to factor that in. If you were really going to do this properly, you'd have to factor that in. In reality, it doesn't make that much difference. It makes about a difference of, I think, about five millivolts. Um, but if you were, I want to discuss how you would factor it in, factor it into your calculations. So if we factored it in, basically, if we factored in the fact that there is this sodium potassium pump, which is moving three sodiums this way and two potassiums that way, then that tells us that you're going to have to have more sodium overall moving this way than you have potassium moving that way. Otherwise, you'd have some something wouldn't be in equilibrium, basically. So the amount of sodium moving this way has to be uh, three to every two potassium moving this way under the uh, electrical potential, uh, under the resting membrane potential, basically. So that complicates matters in reality. Uh, I.e., in reality, the movement of sodium in this direction uh, from the extracellular component to the intracellular component, this movement here, and the movement of potassium from the intracellular component to the extracellular component are not equal in reality. They're very, very almost equal, but they can't be equal because of the sodium-potassium pump having this, um, having this, um, this unequality, basically, uh, i.e. that it moves three sodiums that way and two potassiums that way. So because of that, uh, you're going to have to overall move more sodium this way than you are moving potassium that way. Uh, but uh, it will still find an equilibrium, basically. And it's a good enough approximation for us to assume that uh, the sodium moving this way and the potassium moving that way need to be equal, i.e. the movement of charge needs to be equal. And the reason that that is, and you might think, but surely this one has to be three halves times whatever the potassium was. So if the potassium movement is something, then this one's going to have to be three times, uh, three halves times that, 1.5 times that. Uh, but the reason that doesn't quite hold true is because there are other other pumps that also move potassium and things like that. So it's more, it's much more complicated in reality. Um, but um, we're going to imagine that the sodium-potassium pump is perfect. 
i.e. that it moves an equal number of sodium that way and it moves an equal number of potassium that way, i.e. it just perfectly reverses uh, this movement of sodium and the movement of potassium at resting membrane potential. And therefore, when we're calculating what the voltage should be uh, for us to be at equilibrium, we're just going to assume that this sodium this sodium movement this way needs to equal this potassium movement this way, basically. Okay, so in the next video, what we'll do is begin our derivation of this Goldman-Hodgkin-Katz constant field equation. And I'll just write that the name of that fully down. Goldman Hodgkin Katz constant field equation. Okay, and the reason I didn't put the full title the full title of the equation in the um, in the video title is just that it wouldn't fit. Um, but and it is sometimes just referred to as the Goldman equation. Uh, constant field equation, but this is its full name, giving credit to all the people who helped discover it. Field equation. Okay, and it's a really, really, really good approximation for um, what the resting membrane potential across cells is, basically. It's very, it gets a very, very close answer.